All right, so now we're going to be looking at Ethereum, but before we do so, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, right? Make sure to hit that subscribe button, also hit the alert button so you can be notified about all the TA that we're constantly bringing you about the hottest cryptocurrencies in the market. Also, you can follow me at Elite underscore charts in Twitter, and you can follow my co-host at Cash at Mac and Co with a zero at the end. <laughs> So it's making code with a zero at the end. So yeah, so whenever we look at uh, into what Ethereum has been doing, right, and we look into to the levels of support and resistance, I continue continue saying this, but but it is you know for, for those who who are a little bit concerned about kind of like the stagnation that Ethereum has shown compared to Bitcoin, right? Um, I believe that you guys should be uh, relaxed. You know what I mean? I mean, I'll be accumulating actually more Ethereum in any downswing. Uh, I'll be really happy with my long position because uh, from an on-chain perspective, what the, the on-chain tells you is that Ethereum sits on top of a stable support, right? But there is no significant level of resistance ahead, right? One of the most significant support Support levels for Ethereum is the one that basically sits at three thousand two hundred dollars, where roughly one point twenty nine million addresses bought more than nine million uh, tokens in there, right? So as long as the three thousand two hundred level continues to hold, Ethereum is pretty much bullish, right? But on a shorter time perspective, on uh, or a shorter time frame per se, right? Uh, you know the the other you know, considerable level of support, uh, you know, underneath Ethereum basically sits at $3,480, right? Where 2 million addresses bought 4.63 million Ethereum. So if if there is a sell-off or there is a spike in, in, in profit taking, right? You, you could potentially uh, wait for, for basically Ethereum to break below $3,400. So then you can, you know, put your buy orders around $3,200. But I, I believe that the likelihood of Ethereum breaking below this support level again is a very low, uh, given the lack of, sing, of, of resistance or of selling pressure ahead of it, right? Now, whenever we look into the, the on-chain dynamics and, and why I, I am saying that, you know, the, the selling pressure behind, behind Ethereum is basically decreasing is because uh, roughly one, well, roughly $2 billion worth of Ethereum has have been burned ever since the London hard fork to, took place. And also more than uh, basically 29, another $29 billion have been, or worth of Ethereum have been put out of circulation uh, because the people have been sending their, their tokens to the Ethereum 2.0 smart contract. So that's roughly, um, yeah, something like $31 billion worth of Ethereum put out of circulation, which is a lot of tokens and a lot of selling pressure that have left the markets, right? Um, so, so the same, I mean, the, the, you can see kind of like this, this network dynamics as well, whenever you look at uh, the balance of Ethereum on, on exchanges, which just continues going down and it's currently sitting at around 18.5 million Ethereum sitting on exchanges right now, right? So, so yeah, it, it does seem like the, like the network dynamics and, and, and you know, are, are favoring the bulls right now, but something that I would like to see, right, to kind of like confirm the, the, the bullish outlook that I have, right? And for Ethereum to basically break this stagnation period that have, we have been seeing over the past few days is that I would like to see uh, another spike in, in the number of new addresses being created on the network because that will, that will basically signify that retail uh, interest is coming in, right? We did see a significant in spike in this, in this metric uh, on October 6th where it went to roughly 140,000 new addresses created on the network on this day. But I would like to see a higher high on this metric that will basically confirm that the network is once again expanding and there is more room for prices to continue going up. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, I mean, we, we, we have seen, uh, you know, the, the wells on the network basically stay pretty much flat over the past few days, right? And that's basically the reaction that we have been seeing also from prices. But, uh, you know, in, in terms of supply and demand or, or basically support and resistance, I, I do believe that Ethereum sits on top of a stable support that could prevent it from, you know, a, a potential sell-off or, or from it 
to you know basically invalidate the bullish outlook and i do see that there is little to no resistance ahead that could prevent ethereum from continue going up so if you continue playing uh, the patient game and you just wait uh, a little bit longer, I do believe that those who are patients will be rewarded with this cryptocurrency. At least that's my take on, on, on Ethereum. I, I'm, I'm still leaning bullish. Um, I don't know what, what you're seeing from a technical perspective, Cash. One sec. Yep, I'm uh, Let me just share my screen. I am leaning bullish on uh, Ethereum. Let me just. All right. So uh, as you can see, Ethereum has been consolidating between these two levels, which is uh, 3632 and 3620. Uh, Let me just change the color so it's less more visible. OK, cool. So uh, it's been roughly uh, 10 days, I think, uh, since Ethereum started this consolidation. It's still right there. And it's kind of trying to break above it. And uh, if it does, I'm expecting uh, at least like a liquidity run above these highs over here, uh, uh, which, uh, which is when we're probably going to retest the 4,000 psychological level, right? So I think Ethereum and Bitcoin are uh, in a very similar situation, like uh, relatively speaking, Ethereum needs to retest 60K, uh, sorry, Bitcoin needs to retest 60K, ETH needs to retest 4, 4K. Uh, both are very close towards their all-time high, uh, unlike what happened earlier, like uh, in probably uh, the start of the bull run. Uh, so I am leaning bullish. I think uh, if we get a daily close above this level uh, and uh, a retest of uh, what, what the level? same level here. What level, sorry, Akash? 3620. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So if we get a daily close above it and uh, probably uh, on a lower time frame, a retest of this uh, leading to a good bounce, uh, then I'm expecting it is to run to 4K. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's going to happen pretty soon. Uh, so the only question that I'm wondering right now is if, ETH is going to hit its all-time high first or Bitcoin. I am leaning more towards uh, ETH. Why? Let me show you. A really interesting chart that I just stumbled upon is this, right? You see a very clean head and shoulders pattern, although the right shoulder isn't that clean, uh, which is why I am looking at these two scenarios, right? So let me just explain the bullish scenario first, right? So if we get a uh, bullish close over 3639, which is kind of around the same place uh, on, on the other chart, I had marked 3620 as my resistance level. Uh, if we look at this level, yes, we've already broken above it and now it's retesting. But uh, if you look at the uh, the four hour time frame and uh, draw the the neckline based on uh, this uh, this time frame, I think there's still, uh, it's getting rejected right now, right? So it is, uh, we just got to wait, like Ali said, we, it's, it's a patience game. So, uh, if we wait and if Ethereum closes above this and manages to retest it, then I think, uh, the theoretical targets for, uh, the head and shoulders predict that it, uh, there's at least a 25% upswing, right? And if you want to be conservative, you can take a profit at the all time high, which comes around 43.87 on this FTX, uh, perp. But, uh, I think we've, uh, we're going to see this, uh, happen pretty soon, right? So if this is the bullish scenario. If the bullish scenario doesn't play out, then this is what I'm looking at, which is since uh, the the right shoulder isn't that particularly like well defined as compared to the left shoulder, I think we might get a liquidity run below these uh, levels here. Uh, probably even uh, come down here. Right. So this, I think this scenario would uh, like if this happens, I I'm gladly gonna long uh, at thirty two hundred. Right. And an interesting thing that you, that is uh, this, the base of the, the left shoulder, the right shoulder, which comes around 3203 is exactly what I am looking at on a one day time frame over here, 3202, right? Uh, as the base of this uh, entire pullback. So things are looking really good, but I think uh, only time will tell if Ethereum is actually gonna break above this, uh, the neckline and then go higher. Or if it's going to reject it at the next line and uh, revisit the $3,200 level, right? So, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's what I have. Yeah, that, that, that's a good take. I mean, and also from, from an energy perspective, it does seem that, that any retest to $3,200 will be basically a gift for, for those bulls on, on this token because basically they will be able to long uh, Ethereum at that, at that price point before it basically heads higher. 
So um, I, you know, from a from an on chain and from a technical perspective, it does seem that three thousand two hundred dollars could could be a, a good price point to long Ethereum if it you know does if if it basically gets rejected from the current three thousand three hundred I mean three thousand six hundred uh, resistance bar barrier. Right. Right. So right, right. Uh, another. Do, do you uh, agree with that? Yeah, I do agree with that, and I I am so honestly I'm a little confused. I'm although I'm leaning a little bullish, right? So the reason why I'm leaning bullish is this is uh, the RSI paired with the nine moving average, and as you can see here, it's it's uh, there's a bullish crossover that took place right now, right? And if you look at what happened here, right, uh, exactly the same place, right? Ethereum rallied quite a bit. Uh, there was a bullish crossover, but then a minor a retest, a pullback, a correction, and which was followed by like a massive boom, right, which took place here. So if if we're seeing something like this similar happen here, uh, again we saw something similar here, um, uh, an upswing uh, followed by a bullish crossover here. And okay, never mind. This is a little different than compared to this. But so if you compare this over here, this run up with this run up here, uh, they look exactly similar with the bullish crossover happening on the RSI. So it'll be really interesting. I'm I'm gonna I'm probably gonna open like a a pilot position, see how it goes. Like if we get a good close above uh, the next line, then uh, probably I'm going to add more. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that sounds that sounds like a good plan. I mean, it, it also you know is validated by the on-chain metrics, but but yeah, I mean any once again any any, any downswing towards three thousand two hundred is basically a, an opportunity for to long this cryptocurrency before it goes towards new all-time highs but uh but yeah if, if you like this content please make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel and also please follow us on twitter